Hey YouTube, welcome back. I have an update for a build that we played in the past. It's got some new toys, it's got some new movement skills, and it feels so much better than it did in the past. Not only that, but it's dealing a lot more damage. So let's take a look at it. This is a skill that, unless you're following this channel, you might not even know that it even exists. It's a sub-skill of Void Cleave, which means we're going to be a Sentinel. We are going to uh, ascend as a Void Knight. And in Void Cleave, we have a sub-skill called Ravaging Aura. So it's kind of weird. It is a void spell. It doesn't scale with vitality the same way that the other insane vitality scaling spells do. So it doesn't quite have the two flat void damage per point. But as an entire build, it complements Abyssal Echoes very, very well. So the basic idea of this build is that we'll be using Void Cleave both as a movement skill, as a proc, as an ailment applicator, and it'll apply or it'll turn on Ravaging Aura. So Ravaging Aura will deal a little bit of spell void damage over time for our character. And then as we Void Cleave, we also proc our other void spell damage over time skill, which is Abyssal Echoes. So Abyssal Echoes is the brunt of our damage. It is overwhelmingly our single target damage, but the Ravaging Aura feels great for clear and it does kill white monsters very well, even up and past 300 corruption, which is where I've been playing this character now. So this character in the past, we played it. You can check out the YouTube video. It'll be linked in the description of this video here. But the biggest updates are, <laughs> they seem small, but they're actually really big. We get to use Void Cleave as a movement skill now, which is awesome. It feels so good, not even because Lunge has been bugged for the majority of the 0.9 patch, but also just Void Cleave feels great when you can move almost half the screen away from your character in any direction. It just, shoo. Oh man, it feels so good. Not only that, but it opens up other skills, not only to be specialized, but skills to have on our bar. Let's talk about that real quick, because we're going to cover the updates first, and then I'll give you like the generic build guide aspect of this build later. So we no longer need to have lunge on our bar as a movement skill. We never had lunge specced in the past, but we did have to have it in our bar. So we were procking Abyssal Echoes off of our Void Cleave, now we can also put Abyssal Echoes on our bar, which means for single target, instead of only applying the Abyssal Echoes every 2.7 seconds, we can Void Cleave and then also cast Abyssal Echoes. And then in between each of those procs, we can, we can pop the Abyssal Echo by using our, um, our Vengeance. In case you're not familiar with what I mean by pop, Abyssal Echoes, it applies Abyssal Decay. And then if it's applying that Abyssal Decay over and over, it has a max stack size of one. So in between each of these floofs, we need to punch the enemy in order to consume that Abyssal Decay and have all the damage happen at once. This is a void damage over time skill. It kind of looks like a hit based build because when you pop the Abyssal Decay, all of that damage happens at once. So moving on to the second big update for this character, not only do we have a sweet new movement skill and we get significantly more single target damage because of our Abyssal Echoes, we also have some changes to some of the most crucial skills in the past that Sentinel has access to, and that's Sigils of Hope. So Sigils of Hope, it still gives you percent increased damage. If you're using a shield, it still gives you block chance and block effect, which is very good. But if you're only using it for percent increased damage in the past, it gave you a ton of flat armor. And things like flat armor and also flat dodge, those values are very, very low when you craft them as suffixes on your gear. So if you get sorry, if you get flat armor, if you get flat dodge from your skills, you're very, very happy about it, which was the case with Sigils of Hope for such a long time. And in the past, I would tell you Sigils of Hope and Volatile Reversal are the two skills that you really need to have on basically every single Sentinel build. And one of those just got knocked down a peg. So we're obviously still using Volatile Reversal because it's insane, but we're no longer using Sigils. Instead, this skill got knocked down a peg and Anomaly got knocked up a peg. I don't feel comfortable saying it got knocked up. Let's move on. So Anomaly got a bug fix. In the past, you hold that alt in this, it would say it shreds and applies void shred to nearby enemies. And in the past, it just never really did that, which was awkward. So this is such a big bug fix that it actually feels like just a buff altogether because it was bugged for such a long period of time. Nowadays, what Anomaly does correctly is it applies one stack of Void Shred every half second to the enemies nearby. It also applies those slow stacks as well, like it says there, but that's less relevant to us. So 
like we'll see in our uh, in our blessings here, we actually don't even have any source of shred because for any monster that we need shred, we just wait five seconds, three seconds, and we get our capped void shred very, very quickly. So instead, we can go things like crit multi, but we're not a crit build. We can go things like health, but we already have over 4,000 life. So instead, we get leech, which is one of the most interesting things about this build. So that kind of captures the updates to the build. We are using Anomaly instead of using Sigils because Sigils doesn't have flat armor and Anomaly got buffed. We are using Void Cleaves and Movement Skills. So we no longer need to have Lunge, which means we can have Abyssal Echoes on our bar, which makes our Sickle Target damage better. Let's talk about the two other portions of this build that really, really stand out. One is the defenses, and the other one is the Leech. So we'll talk about these two things, and then after that, Build Guide will run through everything. The defense of this build. Sentinels are not tanky. We could make an entire YouTube video talking about Sentinels not being tanky. They look tanky. They look handsome. They look like the Knight class that uses a shield and has tons of defense. In the end game, when you get to la, when you get to Empowered Monoliths, I'm going to steal this from somebody in chat because they had a really good one-liner about this. When you get to Empowered Monoliths, Sentinels feel very tanky. You have all of your suffixes taken care of. You have tons of resistances in your tree. If you're a paladin, you have some crit avoidance built into your tree as well. All of your suffixes and your gearing process is very easy on a sentinel. However, when you get to level 100, your sentinel feels very squishy because the ceiling for the defenses in your build is quite low. Look at a build like Smite Hammerden using the Devotion. Look at most sentinel builds. They really don't have much in terms of less damage taken. You can use a shield, but so can other classes. You can build armor, but so can other classes. You could use a, a, a Bastion of Honor. A Bastion of Honor should not be in the game. You have this note here that says less damage taken from nearby enemies, and that's about it. Before you well actually me, because I know that's everyone's favorite hobby, you could use things like Rebuke, which are absolutely busted in terms of defense. But let's be real, how many of you are actually putting Rebuke in your build? <laughs> if you are, Kudos, but for the vast majority of people, they're not. So one of the reasons that this particular build stands out and it is able to be played in hardcore, I've previously played this to level 100 in hardcore and 500 corruption. Um, one of the reasons this build stands out is first of all, we're using a Titan Heart. So we're not using Shield. Shield is good. I love Shields a lot, but we get to use a Titan Heart because remember Void Cleave only works with two-handed axes and two-handed swords. So this gives less damage taken here. But more interestingly than that, is this little vengeance skill. And if you haven't seen the previous video for this, you might be asking, why do we have vengeance alongside a bunch of good skills? Vengeance, we need something that hits the enemy with good attack speed or good cast speed or good proc rate to consume the abyssal decay that we put on enemy. Because when we use abyssal echoes like this, in between each of those, we want to be punching the enemy. If we're not punching the enemy in between each of those ploofs of the abyssal echoes, we are losing damage. And sometimes we go like this, and then we also cast this. In between each and every one of those, we want to be hitting the enemy to consume the Abyssal Decay, or else we're losing damage. Which is why we're using attack speed, which is why we have a good attack speed base, which is why we have attack speed in our Volatile Reversal, and even attack speed in our Anomaly over here. So Vengeance, not only are we using it to proc Abyssal Echoes, we're also using it as a mana generator from our base mastery tree over here, because quite frankly, sometimes we are guzzling our mana by procking all these skills. And having a skill that gives mana on skill use feels quite good. The third thing that Vengeance is doing for us is it gives us relevant defenses. Unlike most Sentinel builds, we have one less damage taken modifier here, which applies to the next two hits against us. And we also have this less damage taken modifier over here. The inclusion of Vengeance is really the thing that makes this build stand out as a unique build, a very fun playstyle and like good defenses, whereas most builds just don't have good defenses. You could try this build with Devouring Orb, for example, your mana would be significantly worse and you wouldn't have the defense that Vengeance gives you. It really is the like underlying linchpin of the entire build here, which feels great. Let's talk about the second most interesting thing about this build and then we'll go over like a broad interview and that is the Leech. So in Anomaly, if you're playing a crit build, you probably have all five points down here. All this like nice little critical strike chance stuff, which feels really easy in terms of capping your crit when you're playing a Void Knight. We're not a crit build, so we get to use all of our points however we want. We also don't need Void Shred anymore 
which means we can get as much leech as we can possibly fit into the build. We have 3.9 down here, down here could be five. We're currently sitting at 42% of our damage leech as health. So we have 14% damage, and then we also have uh, a triple modifier here. So 200% increased health leech. This means you take whatever leech you do have and you triple it. We have 42% of our overall damage leeches health. Take a look at some Eclipse at the beginning of this, especially during the tier four Kremers fight in the Soulfire Bastion, and you'll see that our leech is absolutely insane. It really trivializes some of the hardest encounters in this game. And it also is damage over time leech. If you've never heard me or someone else rant about how insane damage over time leech is, what it really means is twofold. We can have some leech going on some enemies over here and then I can walk over there and the monsters off screen will still be leeching to me. And the other thing that's important about that is uh, if I'm full health and the damage is still going on the enemies, if something hits me over here, my leech is still going, so to speak, because I'm still damaging enemies. Compare that to a crit build. If a crit build punches an enemy and then gets hit subsequently, I don't have any leech because your leech turns off when you're on full health. So the fact that we have 42% damage leech's health and it's all damage over time leech means that this build is very, very um, healthy. It's like we have relevant defenses and we also have tons of relevant leech, which is kind of absurd. So those are the broad strokes of this build. Let's go over some of the finer details in case you haven't seen what's going on in the past. So uh, in Vengeance here, we're going to go left to right across the five skills. We basically have every single thing that gives us quality of life and defenses. We have 100% increase to global damage. It's not insane, but it's relevant, so we take it. We have the attack speed here, damage over time, and one extra repost things down here. The last two points of vengeance aren't particularly useful, so we just put them down here because it might do something someday. In a void cleave, we have all the points to the bottom right. I uh, <clears throat> I was illustrating how to <laughs> respect gear. So pretend that we have 22 points instead of the only 20 points that we have currently. You would have all five points into a nulling presence. You have one point into gravity's edge to use as a movement skill and one point into abyssal echoes proct down here. As many extra points as you have on void cleave, if you have like plus, uh, plus one, plus two, or maybe plus three or four to void cleave, you would be filling out the cooldown recovery speed. That feels excellent. And then the rest of that would just be the, uh, the more multipliers that are on these two nodes because these two more multipliers do apply to your ravaging aura down here. Those are the nodes that are most important to you. Volatile Reversal is one of the strongest skills in the entire game. That's why we use it. We have increased damage taken and increased damage taken. So this is 60. This is uh, 60 plus 30 is 90. And we double it because, remember, Volatile Reversal stacks because, of course, it does. If you hit an enemy with the beginning and the end of it, just like those two pink circles, if you're standing on top of an enemy, you're going to hit them with both sides. Then we have 180% increased damage taken. On top of that, we have some extra movement speed, some extra attack speed, so that we can actually swing our sword fast enough. And we turn off the health restore because we do not need it, and we'd rather have the cooldown recovery speed instead. If you wanted to go ham, you could even have the no longer restores mana, because you don't really need the mana restore, but I don't know. I guess if you have like plus one, two, three, we have plus, plus one here. Uh, yeah, so like the percent increased health, I think you would drop the percent increase out. Like if you get like plus three or plus four to volatile reversal, there's some even further min-maxing that you could do in here. Abyssal Echoes. This is pretty much the only way that you ever scale Abyss or sorry, that you ever use Abyssal Echoes. Uh, we have all the points to the top right, having them cast in place. That is why you don't see the tooltip showing up on Abyssal Echoes, because technically it's casting an Abyssal Rift that casts Abyssal Echoes for you. And that's why your DPS doesn't show up on the tooltip there. On the left side, we have all the spell void damage and the Abyssal Decree. There's an important note here, and I will put this in the description of the YouTube video as well. This node should be 20% more damage for both Abyssal Echoes and for our Ravaging Aura. It's currently bugged. It doesn't do anything. It's useless. It gives you attack speed, but it's not worth the points right now. If this gets fixed in the future, you will have another 20% more damage than I do, and your build will have uh, more single target than my, than my build does, because my single target is kind of low right now. On Anomaly, we're pretty much using this the only way that anyone ever uses it. The only difference is we're not crit, so we're cutting out these five points down here. Um, Anomaly, I've seen people try to use the other portions of this, like the top left, for example, to make it deal damage. But quite frankly, the opportunity cost of using Anomaly in any capacity other than these nodes over here is a waste because this is hugely beneficial to us. Gives us cooldown recovery speed when four of our skills are based on cooldowns. 
gives us attack and cast speed, gives us an enormous amount of leech, and then it triples it. Yeah, this is ex exactly what we want. And then we already talked about the void shred that happens every half second as well. Let's take a look at the mastery. Um, we have no points in Paladin, which is uh, important because we're no longer using Sigils of Hope. We have a ton of points in our base tree here. So we're level 100. Uh, we're going to have a couple more points than you might if you're just starting this build out. So you'd have to trim around the edges. Maybe you trim things like just a little bit of strength node here. Maybe you trim a couple strength nodes here. But this is what we ended up at when we hit level 100. So we do want a bunch of attack and cast speed. So we have all the nodes at the very top here. In Void Knight, we have some... Uh, flat void damage, which applies to our spells, spell void damage here, and then this strength node. Strength gives us 4% increased damage and also gives us relevant armor because we have quite a bit of armor at this point, 59% standing in a level 47 zone. So in level 100 zone, it'd be a little bit lower than that. But about 2,800 armor right there, 3,200 after we hit something. Um, we have our melee kill threshold, which does feel quite good. I picked this up pretty late, like around level 90 or so, but it does feel quite good. Vitality scaling is still very relevant for percent increased damage on a Ravaging Aura, and then the flat spell void damage that applies to your Abyssal Echoes, and then a bunch of movement speed, which makes this build feel nice and zoomy when you're running through your Echoes. So that about covers this. Nothing in Paladin and nothing in Forge Guard. Let's take a look at our gear real quick. If you saw my video in the past, you saw me with a insane 2LP double prefix void damage, damage over time, Dream Thorn. That's the dream. You would like to use a Dream Thorn. It's very, very good for this build. But if you uh, if you only have one LP, then you might be interested instead in an item that's slightly more obtainable. So something along the lines of this, having chill on your weapon. If you are using a Dream Thorn, you actually don't have chill in your build. So chill is great. You're looking for something along the lines of this. It's, uh, it's a nice fast base. It's got some void penetration built into it. Tons of uh, void damage, damage over time. This is the kind of thing that you are looking for here. Looking at our class specific affixes, so like our helmet, our body armor, and our relic, we have tons of leech, so we don't need regen, and we're using a two hander, so we'd like to get less damage taken whenever possible. Titan Heart is relatively low on LP, uh, sorry, LP level, so it's very easy to get one with that has one LP on it. You'd like to get as much vitality on this thing as possible, it'll give you a ton of life. Look at my life total, I'm 4,400. If I take this thing off, I'm 3,300. So this thing is giving me more than a thousand life on my character here. On the helmet, I really do think you want as many levels to Volatile Reversal as possible, and then maybe even some Exalted Vitality if you're insanely lucky. That's the kind of thing you're looking for. In general, I would put Flat Health on the bottom there, but as it worked out for me, I put Percent Increased Armor instead. I have a ton of uh, Percent, or sorry, I have a ton of Flat Life because we have 81 Vitality here, so I'm kind of happy actually with having Percent Increased Armor on the helmet. I think it worked out quite well to make us nice and tanky. The rings, these are new this patch, these Opal Rings. I, I'm almost willing to say every build double opal rings all the time because they're so good. I'm not quite going to say that, but I'm almost ready to say that. These things are very, very strong. Remember, uh, for our Ravaging Aura, Ravaging Aura scales off of both strength and vitality. So plus two gives us 16% increased damage as the implicit. And then it also gives us, you know, health and other things like armor from strength. And the cooldown recovery speed, remember four of our skills are based on cooldown. So this is exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. On our Relic, we're looking for as many plus levels to Void Cleave as possible. Plus two is fine. Plus four is probably overkill, but just something like that along, those, along those lines. Technically, Void Damage is better than Damage Over Time because things like Void Cleave, it's still a melee attack. It still hits enemies. Vengeance technically does damage as well. So when you're erring between the two of those, Void Damage is technically better than Damage Over Time. For our Boots, remember there's a new affix, cooldown recovery speed now rolls on Boots. Instead of Poison Resistance, the min-max version of this build would have cooldown cover speed down there. We talked about using a unique pair of boots, which I'll put on the screen, which is um, Vion's Chariot. Vion's Chariot gives you more damage for your next movement skill every four seconds. Every three seconds, four seconds, something like that. But the, the movement skill here is Void Cleave, which gives us the Ravaging Aura. And our AoE clear already feels good. If Vion's Chariot could somehow buff our single target damage, which is overwhelmingly coming from Abyssal Echoes, I'd be more uh, more willing to farm up a pair of those. But for something like Melee Surge, for something like Transplant, if you're playing a Lich character, those Vion's Chariot are really compelling in terms of damage. But for us, because they only buff our clear speed build, or the clear speed skill, and the clear speed already feels good, I think we're fine just not having Vion's Chariot. But again, cooldown recovery speed is the kind of thing you're looking for there. 
Rest of our gear is like void damage, damage over time, void damage, damage over time, void damage, damage over time. We have a bunch of shred built into our character from Anomaly. And ideally, you'd be using a Dream Thorn, which has another 40 void penetration built into it. So the real question here is, do we want to use Wingard? Because it gives us haste. And the answer is yes, because haste feels great. But do we want to use Wingard? Or do we want to use something like Atrophy instead? So let me see if I have a pair of Atrophy here that we can kind of hover over. These things have uh, 21 penetration against all resistances for damage over time. If you're using a Dream Thorn, the relative value of, a, of a Atrophy goes way down, but we're not using it, so maybe we could use this. Wing Guards, for me, they wing out. They, they wing out. They win out because the melee attack speed feels quite good, and I love having some kind of haste in this character. Anytime that I have like a melee character or like a pseudo melee character like we are right now, just having haste and allowing me to move and kite with more ease feels excellent. So I really like the inclusion of wing guards in this version of the build. Rounding out the build, we'll go with blessings next, but the idols, idols are very easy. We're playing a void knight, so we want as much vitality as we can possibly get. And then we have one little idol here that has chance to gain inspiration on kill with void skills. If I close this window real quick, let's, uh, let's hold down alt and we see that inspiration is a four second buff that gives you even more cooldown recovery speed. So inspiration is something that you want to include in your build as well. Let's do the very end of this. We'll look at the blessings. We talked about uh, Leech being so interesting, putting us at 42% damage Leech's health. Ending the storm is kind of a throwaway blessing unless you're playing a lightning build, which I'm upset about. And it's another thing that I could rant about for a YouTube video, but that's for a different time. Suffice it to say, we have lightning resistance here. We have crit avoidance here. In the past, Sentinels would not want crit avoidance because Sentinels always wanted to use their helmet and their body armor implicit modifiers to cap your crit avoidance, but those no longer exist. So Sentinels no longer have crit avoid gear. So you do need to get crit avoidance somewhere in order to get over that 100% threshold. So we are getting a crit avoid blessing from the Reign of the Dragons. The more that I play Last Epoch, the more that I really just like getting as much armor as possible. So we have 300 flat armor from Spirits of Fire, and then we have another 60% increased armor coming from um, Age of Winter. So this is the kind of setup that I've been enjoying, and I do it on many, many of my builds these days. So that about finishes it up. As you saw in the beginning of this video, if single target damage is the only thing you care about, this is not the build for you. However, this build has major hipster points because some people don't even know that Ravaging Aura is a skill that exists in the game. It is very, very fun to play. It is fun to jump around, punch something, use Volatile Reversal, click this, do that, shoo, jump around like this. The fact that Void Cleave is now a movement skill that moves you halfway across the screen feels so good, and I've really, really been enjoying it. There's been a couple bugs here and there. I know that we talked about Abyssal Echoes, for example, the 20% more damage that would come from here doesn't work. So <laughs> we're trying to play builds that are sweet, and then there's just these little bugs that get in the way. So they're not quite as sweet as I wanted them to be, but they're still very enjoyable. So this is the update to the Ravaging Aura character. If you play this build, I want to hear how it is for you. I want to know if there's something that you did to fix your single target damage, let me know because the single target damage, single target damage is kind of weak. Single target bosses um, do take a little bit of time, but thankfully, because you have such insane leech and good defenses, you can pretty much face tank all the hardest content of the game. It's a fun build. I like it a lot. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.